Hello viewers, when I think of classic Gran Turismo, I think of something like this. A Mazda touring car around a small Japanese circuit like Tsukuba. And that just so happens to be the daily race A of this week. And this turned out to be an incredibly fun race, which also produced quite a lot of carnage. I suppose that's always going to happen when you put 12 people in the same car around a very narrow circuit. And so join me on this adventure around Tsukuba for a couple of very interesting races. This first one was actually one of my favorite ones of the week. And whenever the Mazda Rosa Touring Car comes up, the car we are all driving here, you know that you're in for a very close battle. Not always the cleanest, but certainly a close one. As we then head towards the, the far hairpin here at Tsukuba, it's quite a short circuit, quite narrow, quite a small track, but very quintessentially Gran Turismo. This is what Gran Turismo is all about, really. When you think back to the early games, Gran Turismo, let's say one to four, you're probably going to be driving a Mazda MX-5 around a small Japanese track like this. Therefore, we can have somewhat a nostalgic experience here. Although, admittedly, I never really did play multiplayer on those first couple of games. And therefore, this is a little bit different. In fact, that is a question for you viewers. For those of you who maybe managed to do some multiplayer on Gran Turismo 3 and 4, it would be interesting for you to tell me your stories about that. The only time I ever did it would be at a LAN party. A couple of my dad's friends were uh, very big enthusiasts of Gran Turismo and I managed to do a LAN party, but this was well, 20 years ago. Multiplayer was a very different thing back then. Anyway, I digress massively from this race, which is now hotting up on only lap two. Still six more laps remaining of this. We have a Dutchman in the lead, which is quite a familiar sight. We've, uh, we've come accustomed to that in recent years, certainly for F1 viewers. Now with the Frenchman in second, I'm looking to try and engineer a move here into the first corner. It's not quite going to happen because we have a big dose of oversteer on the exit of the final turn. And for those wondering, I will put my setup in the description below for those who wish to have a bit of assistance on that. We're going to go side by side now with the Dutchman. Look at this move, guys. Throw it in quite deep. Really ride the camber around the outside. And move up from third to second. Lovely move. And that is something we're not used to in F1. A Dutchman being overtaken around the outside quite effortlessly by Alex Albon. Doesn't really happen all that much. Therefore, this isn't totally realistic by modern F1 standards, you could say. But it is a fun race. I think there's no question about that. We are very close. Lots of respect being shown between the three of us here. And that's what we always like to see. In fact, if you go back on my channel, there's lots of very clean and close, respectful races that I do broadcast on this channel. And uh, it might not always seem like that. It may well seem like the focus is always on the crashes and the negativity. But I don't know. I think there's always room for some very close races on this channel. And this is certainly one of them. It's really hotting up now as we move on to lap four. The Dutchman there just dropping off slightly. Seems to run out of some form or skill at this moment. Just dropping off slightly from the two of us here in the battle for the lead. Frenchman sliding about all over the place. And as I mentioned, I will put my setup in the description. And the setup is uh, quite important here. I didn't really fo uh, focus on it too much. I didn't spend too much time changing the setup of the car kind of did something quite quickly just lowered the ride height and changed the natural frequency with a slight change to braking sensitivity as well or the throttle sensitivity should i say but um as a result of actually having set up in daily race a which is quite unusual um, offers a little bit of differentiation between different drivers i suppose if we look up the inside here the beginning of lap number five the space is certainly there and actually he doesn't really trail break it into the corner does the frenchman a bit of contact there but i think i was up the inside for significantly long enough for him to realize that the move was more than halfway through and uh, perhaps therefore could have driven a bit wider up the inside of me there but and just carry the momentum around the outside 
and you really do have to get quite uh, feisty with your close quarters combat in this type of race this is a little bit unlike let's say a group three race where you spread out a little bit more certainly a group two or one race where aerodynamic wash comes into effect in these kind of cars this is this is really good for battling because you can drive these cars pretty much nose to tail it's almost like go-karting where there's not too much of an effect obviously these cars do have a big wing on the rear end but it doesn't seem to affect your ability to drive closely to the car in front and so a good battle materializing so far in the race moving from third to, to first with a couple of well-judged moves however it's not always easy to preserve your lead the two guys behind have the slipstream benefit and i'm not really able to pull away despite being the fastest car on the track with the 103.4 done on the uh, fourth lap and so from here to the end it's not going to be an easy ride we do have to defend somewhat and just keep our call sometimes the best defense isn't necessarily actually defending and moving your car to the inside and the best defense is just driving very consistently to a point where they can't quite get within sort of lunging distance and that's probably your best bet at staying ahead just pure speed being quick is the best defense however always uh, easier said than done the frenchman here is not letting me off the hook he's not making it easy for me which is to be honest a good thing we want some close battles in this game it'd always be boring i suppose if you just drove away and easily won every time and therefore i'm in a lovely battle here a lovely lovely battle I think that's the nicest way to describe it. We are moving quite clear here of 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th. All of them. We are moving clear of all of them. It really is uh, the top three fighting here for the pole position. Not pole position, for the first place, should I say. I do apologise. I'm commentating on this quite late in the day. And so my mental faculties aren't at 100%. So we go a little bit deep here. And that's going to open up the exit here to the Frenchman, who gets a run, but with that slightly wider line, you can get a bit of uh, better momentum on the exit. It seems to have been the case here. The Frenchman very close into the final turn on the lap. A little bit wide, wider than I'd certainly like. As we ride out onto the kerb and begin the final lap, I am quite nervous here of a move, and so I go slightly defensive, go slightly narrow, Make sure we don't overshoot the apex too much. Just really keep it pinned on the apex there. So you really minimise the chance of that guy nipping up the inside. As the Dutchman continues turning right. You might have just spotted that. He's turned out of a right-hander. Continued turning right despite the track actually straightening up. And he finds himself meeting Barry R at 90 degrees. A perpendicular meeting with the wall. Absolutely classic stuff. And now it turns into a two-horse race between myself and the Frenchman. We're going to go nice and narrow here. Really keep it nicely pinned on the inside. Which, again, removes the possibility of being undercut. Unless, of course, they go across the grass. But I must say that this has been a highly respectful race. And that's what you want to see. And that's quite unusual for Daily Race A, if we're being honest. Coming through the final corner... It's going to be a victory. My first one in quite a while. Come on. Get in there, Lewis. I think I was the most consistent out of the top three there. That was a... Uh, I think that's the first race win I've had in like a month. So yeah, it was my first win in about a month or something like that. But we're going to turn our attention to uh, the qualifying lap. Now, it took me five or six laps here to really get up to speed with this car. The grip is actually very low on this race. The car does want to slide quite a lot. And as we touched upon in that first race, trying to straighten up the exit is quite important. But also, I'd say, just really applying the power very gently. Um, just if you're experiencing a lot of oversteer on the exit of the corner, just really try to apply the power just a little bit slower. Keep that rear end in check. To make sure it doesn't slide about too much. Through this right-hander, you can actually carry a lot of speed through there. There is actually quite a bit of downforce on this car. Well, I say that maybe a bit more than you think you can actually carry a bit of speed through that right hander quite a fast corner into the hairpin here don't really roll the speed nicely i don't get on the power as early as i probably could have done and as a result of that you see i lose a bit of time there on the exit it's still going to be my fastest lap to date uh, with a 
3-0 being my fastest lap so far. But this is going to be a 102.9. This final corner does go on for ages. It's about really keeping it nice and narrow. And they're getting on the power to drive out to the curb on the outside. As we cross the line, there it is, a 102.9. Solid lap. But you're going to join me back in the Americas now. I decided to move over to the Americas server and see how it played out over there. And actually someone in the previous video commented that I probably shouldn't race in this server because it's actually quite messy a lot of the time. And whilst I don't always agree, sometimes it is actually very good. Yeah, you often have some very good races in this server. But this one was not that. This one was not a clean race. So, uh, so in this instance, that guy was right. You know, it can be very messy, and this one was. So on the right-hand side, I've got someone there. We are going to get the move done. Up into sixth place. As we're looking here, on the side of fifth. Not quite going to work here. There's nothing to be gained by going around the outside there in that kind of position. So we're going to just release the brake. Or release the throttle, should I say. And allow TPC underscore Brown Beast 2 to resume fifth place. It was a little bit deep here. We can capitalise on that. Keep the car nice and narrow. Get on the power as early as possible. It's going to be a drag race between the two of us. Just like the two cars in front as well. He has the momentum you can see on the left-hand side. Not quite going to be enough though. We've got the inside line here for the final corner. As long as we don't overshoot, we should be okay. And that's exactly what's happened. Just keep it nice and narrow. Be patient. Then wait for the exit to power out. I was thinking the car in front would get a penalty for that. I'm running wide four wheels into the AstroTurf. But it didn't quite work. As uh, that guy gets fired wide. I don't know if that was contact or if he just forgot to brake. But either way, he's lost a handful of positions. And I would say that this is where the race slowly but surely begins to unravel because i think this guy was a little bit iffy on the brakes on a lot of the corners you see i almost went into the back of him there onto that hairpin i suppose it is the duty of the car behind to judge it um, but maybe this guy is a fernando alonso and he's very good at and crafty on the deceleration it keeps it nice and narrow there it was a bit of a late moving across on the defensive zone on the braking zone but we're going to allow that and just progress for now. Into the final corner. I say he breaks a little bit early here. And uh, maybe holds on the brake a little bit too long. Catching me off guard. Still my fault to an extent. Whether it was a bit unexpected to break for that long. Definitely not break for that long. You can actually carry a lot of speed through that final turn. You get the line dead right. We're going to try and engineer a move here. It's not quite happening for us. You see second place is kind of all over the place as well. So... We still have a sense here that second place is achievable in this one. The leader is long gone. There's not much chance of that um, position unless they make a catastrophic error and get a massive penalty. They're quite deep into this one. Can we engineer the old switcheroo? It's not quite going to happen. We're going to have to keep fourth. And this was actually a very fun race because Tsukuba, you know, is quite narrow. These cars, I suppose they're quite small cars. Um, it's actually a really good combo, I think, for racing in general. This car tends to produce some good battles, given that you can follow each other quite closely and have very good, good fights. And so I was always happy to see this car appear. And this week, of course, Eddie Race A seems to be delivering. Up the inside we go into the first corner. Now Ben Rob there is going to have other ideas. Basically says, well, you know what? That was a nice move, but you can be introduced to my friend, The Grass. They get run quite wide there. And that was not um, the nicest moment of the race. High Hatter there comes in, bit of a uh, bit of a helping hand, and actually runs Benrod completely off the track or very wide off the racing line, certainly. And so, this is um, you could argue inexcusable, but uh, but also just a lack of skill or just a lack of keeping my cool. And I introduced Benrod to the grass as well, so. We both know the grass. We both introduced each other to the grass. You could call that one all. We're going to progress here and try to get back on the podium, if at all possible. Setting a 103.4, our fastest lap in the race so far. The fastest lap in the race so far. Second place, that guy there, Chris. Making a couple of mistakes and giving us some hope, some chance that we could actually get into that second place. And I think this race and this, this race and the, and the previous one kind of demonstrate that this kind of car around this kind of track can be incredibly fun, incredibly respectful, but at the same time, 
it can throw up some chaotic races and it doesn't always result in uh, sportsmanship being displayed, should we say. Looks like the leaders had a mistake as well because they've just dropped right down. The gap is actually only just over two seconds at this exact moment. In fact, just below two seconds now. And so with only one lap remaining, things are really hotting up here at Tsukuba in Japan in the Mazda MX-5 touring cars. Crossing the line. Can we get one more position? Maybe two, maybe three. That is the question that everyone is asking. Literally everyone was uh, watching this. I had eight billion concurrent viewers on this live stream as I recorded it. Uh, the first time in history that everyone in the world has watched the same live stream at the same time. It's quite incredible. As uh, we're going to go on the outside here of Chris. And this is unfortunately where the race completely unravels. As I fear that he might have tried to turn left a little bit too soon. And it was a classic USA police pit manoeuvre. And I find myself turning right into a left hander as a result. And then just to rub salt in the wounds, lose a position on the line as well. But let's take a quick recap of what exactly went down there. This is Ben Rod introducing me to Barry R or the grass actually and I mean I, I don't really get that one I was clearly there but oh well we live to see another day I suppose and then well actually we don't there we go introduced to Barry R this time with a cone flying about for good measure so we move on I mean the world moves on really doesn't it it's just a race on a game who really cares maybe you do you're still watching the video so probably you do care to some extent but it is quite debatable that there are more important and pressing issues going on in the world right now than Super GT getting hit off on a Gran Turismo race. Um, I think that's fair to say. But what is important to me right now is preserving my lead. As with Scott Jack, I went and set a qualifying time, started this race on pole position, and therefore it's all about doing the Max Verstappen really, isn't it? Inverting your pole position into a race lead and then eventually a race win which is quintessential for Stappen these days so we're trying to emulate him at this moment we managed to do that round turn one just riding the outside line and preserving the position and that's actually something you can definitely do on this race just take some alternative lines slightly wider ones to preserve your momentum I just wanted to draw attention to my faster lap in this entire session of all the three races I've shown you this is about to be my fastest lap. So I just did a 103.3. This one's going to be a bit quicker. Interestingly, taking a very wide line there, which gives the ability to get on the power a little bit earlier and in a straighter line. It's not necessarily much quicker. I thought I'd try it and see how it panned out. Through the middle hairpin here, could have gone the power a little bit earlier and smoother. A bit of oversteer. And actually, I've, I've lost a tenth and a half. But I'm going to recover a lot of that here through this left-hander, just keeping the car pinned car is going to have a bit of oversteer there breaking the beginning of that astro on the left hand side and as you can see keeping it nice and pinned to the inside line before driving out in second gear so a nice and smooth lap i think you do have to get the back end round slightly to really extract maximum uh, speed from this car around this track and um, that lap was actually rather rather nicely done if i may say so myself but eventually, it's going to be a 103.1, my fastest lap of all the sessions so far. Another win for Scott Speed. I hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. I will see you next time. Goodbye.